Well, good afternoon. We are heading out to the desert to go get a pickup. And Grumpy is still working on his gate. Can you tell him in the comments below that it is way too hot outside? It's like 100 degrees today, and he's up there hand sanding his gate. The guy's nuts. But anyway, we're heading out to Brothers, Oregon to go get a uh, broke down Dodge pickup. I guess it's pulling a travel trailer, but they've got someone else coming out to get the trailer and them. So we're just going to get the truck and take it back up to Redmond so it can get fixed. And I don't know what's wrong with it. So we'll figure that out when we get there. But first, we're going to stop here and get some fuel at the alfalfa store. Oh no, the sign's falling down. But yeah, we're going to grab some fuel because this is the only fuel for uh, the next two, three hours of our trip. Okay, we got our fuel and we got our lunch and now we are hitting the road. The feeding trough there is actually a, a really good place to grab some lunch if you got a little more time. But I got to get heading out of here, so maybe next time. Off we go. Brothers, Oregon, which used to be a town, and now it's just a rest stop. Uh, looks like a Dodge, yep, a Dodge 1500 with a travel trailer right there. So that would be the one we're going to get. Get pulled in here and see what's wrong with it. This isn't quite the Albert Desert, but you're camped in the desert, so there's that. Yeah. All right, I'll get her, get her dropped off. You have a good one. So they're camped out there. They're, uh, let me make this thing quiet. Okay, yeah, so they're camped out there. Uh, they were heading out to the Albert Desert, which is a very popular uh, camping destination, an overlanding type of destination out to the southeast of Oregon, and they didn't quite make it. I'm not sure if it's going to the shop on the right or the shop on the left. The shop on the left has a door open, so we're gonna try that one first and see what they wanna do with this thing. Okay, here's where it gets fun. Neither one of these shops know anything about it. They both said they never heard of the guy, but the guy is adamant that this is where it's supposed to go. I asked him which shop and he just told me the one at this address. Well, there's two at the same address. And he is adamant this is where I'm supposed to drop it off. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to let all three of them figure it out and make it not my problem.
that is that. It is no longer my problem. It's at the address he told me to take it to, directly between the two shops over there, so they can all figure it out later. And I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, and now we head back towards home. The only question is, do we go the back way through the desert or the highway and through town? Just kidding. That's not even a question. Back road every time, always. Change of plans. We're not taking the back roads at all because we're not going home. We're getting fuel in Madras, Oregon at the Marv's truck stop here. And we are heading north to Moppin, Oregon to go get another car that broke down up there and bring it back to sisters. So our day just got extended by a whole lot, but uh, grab some fuel, grab some people fuel, and uh, north we go. Okay, we got our second lunch. We've got a full tank of fuel and we've got an empty bag. So all we gotta do is cruise out of this truck stop here and get back on the road. This is the emptiest loves I have ever seen. So we are going through downtown Madras, Oregon, which is about the last real like town and services we'll see for two or two and a half hours. Um, and if you're wondering, it is not uh, foggy. This is not cloudy. This is all smoke, but we don't have any wildfires near us. All this is smoke blowing up from the the big fires down in California, like that big Dixie fire and those others that are going. And Moppin, Oregon, where we're going up here, is uh, the same place we went when I ran up there to uh, fix the U-Haul trailer uh, that had the door problem where I drove five hours back and forth for a 10 minute repair job. Same place, and we're actually going to the exact same city park where that U-Haul trailer was sitting to pick up this car, so this should be a familiar trip. Here we come into Moppet, and down there there's that uh, green silo on the railroad track we saw it last time. There's the town that may or may not have diesel in it, and somewhere down in the bottom of that canyon, over there, is broke down boho we gotta go find. A couple more switchbacks, and I definitely not make a right turn here, and we should be there. Okay, we made it down into Moppin via the road and not the cliff, so that's always a bonus. And just down here at the bottom of the hill should be the, the city park and campground. And there should be a silver Volvo with the hood up. Lots of people enjoying the river today. And this would be our car. We get pulled up in front of it here and see what we got to do to get it loaded up. Okay, so I just went and uh, took a look and it's completely dead electrically. Um, won't do anything, even jump starting it won't make it do a thing. And the key is stuck in the ignition. It's uh, one of those like stick your fob key in the slot thing and then it's all push button from there and it won't give the key fob back, kind of like when the ATM won't give you your credit card back. Uh, and I could bypass it and put it in neutral with the neutral bypass, but it's got an electronic parking brake that is also locked on and I can't bypass that. So we're going to back up to it, um, use the skates to slide it up on the bed, and then uh, we'll have to use the skates to slide it back off the bed and we get to the other side and there's like not much room to load. I'm thinking those people are about to leave with that boat, but I've been thinking that for about five minutes now, so they're going to go ahead and get stuck there while I load this car. And as you might have seen in the video there, I already have the bridle pulled out loose and the skate stuck under the car. That way I can just back in here, drag it up on and uh, get out of here as quick as possible and not block this road for any longer than I have to. So let's go do all that.
better off backing around out of here or is it pretty fast? It's going to be two minutes at most. Oh, okay. Yeah. That actually went uh, really quick. Uh, the skates on this side, because this dip, there was a gap to the bed, so they didn't climb up it like they should have. They just jammed against it. If I would have not drove them so far into the tires, they would have been kicked up in the front and probably cleared that gap. But once the tires are on that fairly slick steel bed, it's gonna slide either way. So uh, no big deal, it worked. Let's. Uh, get it tied down and I left it pretty far back on the bed because we have to slide it off as well and the farther back the less sliding we have to do so uh, where can I put you guys and then we'll tie down well, unfortunately there's nowhere like super good around here to set you guys so you get to sit here next to the trash cans and watch them here won't take long Okay, that's only one side, but the other side is exactly the same, so I'm not gonna make you watch that. I'll put you back in the truck. And I gotta go back in the truck anyway to turn the PTO back on so I can slack down this winch cable. And normally I never wear gloves when I touch a truck, but I did. Okay, it is hot and muggy too. It's like a super humid down here in this canyon sweating my bag off um, that is incorrect it is actually 102 to 104 somewhere right in there but yeah it is like some muggy nasty heat so luckily the AC in this thing works good because if it didn't I wouldn't drive it but now we've got about a two hour drag we're going to drop this thing off and uh, let's get headed that way okay finally two hours later or something like that uh, we are here so now we're gonna figure out where we're gonna put this thing um, I don't want to put it out on the end by the street because the windows are down and won't go up but there's not a whole lot of room in here farther I think I could stick it in that spot there next to that Mustang that truck 
Yeah, we'll do that. I don't want to leave it out near the street with the windows part way down, so we'll kind of hide it back here. Okay, it took a little bit of wiggling, but uh, I got it in here lined up with that space, so now untie everything but one, pull the winch cable back tight, and uh, before you do that, you always look at the hooks underneath and make sure they didn't um, pop out of the slots that you had them in or like partway come out so that they jam up when you actually put some tension on it. So always slack the winch cable down and always check the hooks before you tighten it back up. So uh, we'll get it untied, roll the bed back and see if we can slide this thing off of here. Sorry for the close up, but that'll happen sometimes. Okay, got the winch cable tight and all the skates laid out. So I'm gonna roll it back. And then there's usually a little bit of play in the park for the transmission and the parking brake. So once it's rolled back, I'll pop that other strap off and then I'll pull forward on a little to see if those tires roll ahead just a little bit. Then I can jam those skates under there even farther and then when I let off and those tires roll back, it'll help them climb up onto it. It's the idea anyway. I should probably explain what I'm doing. I'm walking the vehicle off the bed and uh, keeping, as I slide forward, I'm letting the winch cable out so that the winch stays tight so this thing doesn't decide to just take off and fall off the end of the bed. And then I tilt out so that it's sitting more on the bed than the skates and I push out on it and it slides on the back skates or the back tires. Then let the winch out so as I pull the bed back in, get it closer to the end and do it again. So. Uh, now I guess you can go, how about right there? Get a little better view. Oh, don't fall. Right there. Now once we get right to the end of the bed, keep the winch cable nice and tight so that it can't fall off. Then we push the car out. One more good time. Now, we should be able to slide all the way out from under it. Making sure we keep the back of the bed down so it doesn't pop up when it comes out from under those tires. Get that bumper. Got it.
now everything's slack and I can go unhook that bridle. So now we're gonna pull on the winch line. Only problem with doing that is you can create some slack in this pull, so. It's not spooling up super great, but not bad either. So next time we load a car, we'll just park a little farther away from it. So we can pull it out past that loose spot and then uh, it should wind in just fine from there. Hook the grabs and then slack the cable so it doesn't bounce on the bed. Now we just gotta get our skates out. So we'll grab the hammer and knock those out of there. Okay, so. This one beat me a little bit, so I hooked the winch cable back up and just pulled the car slightly forward. Now it's out. Okay, the bed's folded back up. The car's in its spot. Uh, these windows are most of the way up. These ones over here are down, but can't do anything about that, so. There it is. It's not supposed to rain, so it'll be fine. Let's uh, get back in the AC. Okay, so what I really need to do, and I've been meaning to do it since I got this truck, but just haven't yet, is I need to steal some of my wife's dish soap and uh, throw in the toolbox here. Just put a little dish soap down under those uh, skates, and that thing would have just gone all the way down and across that parking lot just by letting out the winch with no problem. And you want to use dish soap because then you just wash it off with water and there's no mess or residue left behind. I used to do that uh, on the fifth wheel sliders on my big trucks. Uh, there's no big trucks here to explain, but the, where the fifth wheel slides back and forth on the, uh, the big rigs, instead of using grease, I would always use dish soap so that I got the slide, but then it just rinsed off with water with the rain and anything like that and left no greasy mess to always be worrying about. So. Babe, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but I'm going to steal your dish soap, so just know that. And after another hour of driving, we are home where I don't even have to open the gate because it's still broken. So what was supposed to be a nice relaxing Saturday turned into like eight, nine hours of tow trucking on the rollback, but it's okay because that's why we have tow trucks. And uh, everybody's cars got where they needed to go, no problem. So everybody happy. And uh, I'm gonna go try this relaxing thing again. So that is it for this one. And we will see you guys next time.